I'm Rev. Dr. Candy Ashenden, pastor of the AFL Congregational Church, and I welcome you to worship this morning. I hope you've been enjoying our outdoor sermon series and our on-location messages. Today is sermon number four of our 10-part series, and today we will be traveling to Maine through the state park and on a lovely pond. I invite you to join me as we think about how we can and should always be on the lookout for fertile soil. The Lord is the sower of the seeds of love and redemption. But we have not always been ready to receive these seeds. Today we hear again the scriptures that remind us of the awesome generosity of God. Help us be good soil, O God, prepared to receive your love and to grow in that love. Amen. Amen. God of abundant love, we come to you this day in the midst of a season of great growth and incoming harvest. All around us are signs of growth in our earth, in our families, in our nation, in our world. We come this day seeking your healing love and abounding mercy. Open our hearts to receive all that you offer that we may become fruitful workers for you. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. In thy kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, no. 
sea, not afraid of where it went. Some of it landed on rocks, some on sand, and some on insufficient soil, some on good ground. The solar did not withhold any of the seed. It was joyfully scattered, broadcast widely to the whole of creation. Do you believe that? The sower just threw it all away, everywhere. You've got to pay attention to where you put the seed. You can't just throw it around. That's stupid and wasteful. You are right. What's the matter with the sower anyway? In times like these, you have to guard against so much. You can't just give the seed to anybody. They have to be the right ones. We don't want the wrong ones laying claim to the seed. Some of the seed might fall on rocky ground where birds come and eat it up. Some of it might fall on places where the soil is not deep enough and where the plants sprout up, they do not have sufficient <clears throat> nourishment to be sustained. See, the sower understands. You take lots of risks when you scatter the seed so broadly. We need to be responsible to see that the seed is not wasted on those who don't understand or appreciate it. Risk is what it's all about. You never know when something will take root somewhere you didn't expect. If we are too careful, too controlling, we might lose something special coming from an unexpected source. So, in other words, we are supposed to trust in the judgment and generosity of the sower. Well, maybe that's not so bad. It's not up to us to determine where the seed goes. The sower will take care of that. You know, you're right. We spend so much time worrying about who's supposed to get the seed. We need to trust the sower. We need to let go of our own fears and our own lack of generosity. Maybe something surprising will happen. I guess I can let go and let God, if you know what I mean. Actually, that's the hard part, relinquishing the control and trusting God. Yep, that's the hard part, all right. A sower went out to sow. God has placed the seed of love and forgiveness in your heart. Go into God's world with joy, telling of the good news of God's abundant, lavish love for all creation. Go to be a witness to all the miraculous possibilities for hope and peace. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Our scripture lesson this morning is the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. But anyone with ears, listen. You may wonder why I've chosen to talk about the parable of the seed and the sower from a place that appears to have no soil. 
But although we've traditionally thought about it and it applies to how humans hear the word of God, it's also about nature. And I think we need to think about being the seed, being the sower, and being the soil. There are three different things that this passage requires of us and that our understanding of God requires of us. And those things are that we need to look around us and not just plant where we think there is fertile soil. Sitting right here, you can see the frog's eggs on the surface of the water. You can see new life bubbling up from where it appears there was nothing. And who are the sowers here? Clearly we are in a place where man has not dropped seeds. This is a place where the wind and the birds have carried the seeds of other things. The frogs have laid their eggs beneath the surface. This has become a fertile soil for many. And I think as we think about this passage, we need to remember that we are all three things. How are we the seed? It seems to me that we are the seed because we are the children of God. We are the people that continue to need to learn and to grow in love and in faith. We are the ones that need to be tended. We are the ones who need to be stretched. We are sometimes the ones who need to be replanted. And how are we the sower? We are also the people of the church. We are the ones who are charged with those who come in seeking to grow, with those who come in seeking to find a place to put their roots down, to begin to develop and blossom in a faith of their own. And we are also the soil. The church is the soil. We are that fertile ground that allows people to be who they are. And it may not always be the rich soil that we think of as farmers. It may instead be water. It may be air. It may be something that we can't imagine being what enriches and enlivens the soul of another. That is our charge, to meet everyone where they are and to be seed, sower, and soil, to meet people and help grow them in their faith. Here in this place where it appears there might be nothing to be built, there are sowers at work among us. And you can see this large beaver dam that has sprung up on what is fertile soil to them. It has created their home, their purpose, the place to raise their family, and right in a source of food for all of them. This just is another example of how fertile soil is different for each and every one of us, for us as humans and for all of God's creatures. And our call is to be sensitive to that reality. And in this little area close by, in a place where there should be no flowers growing, here is one seed that has persisted. A bird must have sown the seed here, or the wind carried it here. And although not appearing to be fertile soil, this iris has blossomed in an unlikely place and thrives to show beauty all around it.
As we scan up the length of this fallen tree, it looks like nothing but an old dead trunk. And yet the further we come, all of a sudden we begin to discover new little signs of new growth and new life. And it makes us think about the fact that we think of the children of our church as the seed, the seed that is to be nurtured and raised up. And there are times when all of us in our lives feel we are useless and feel that we have outlived our purpose or our meaning. And yet this reminds us that whether we can see it or not, we know that we are always in a position of being that fertile soil for the next, to help the next generation raise up. And the elders of our church are so important for that. Whether they are encouraging us and affirming the youth as they go about their endeavors, or whether they are reaching out, sending cards, folding the newsletter, all of the many ways their wisdom and their experience teaches us about the beauty of a lifelong gift of faith. And walking along the path, I keep, can't help but find yet another sign of new life, the beautiful shell of a baby bird. And you can imagine the shell having fallen out of the tree as the baby bird took flight for the first time. New life abounds all around us. And as we've just talked about how it is important and that we should be the seed, the sower, and the fertile soil, the question remains, how? How are we all those three things? And the answer, as always, lies with God. Our answer comes from the Creator who has created all that is around us. The trees behind me, the lake in front of me, even the humans that we all are. And as we look to God, our triune God, the God of threes, how can we not find our strength and our inspiration to be the seed, the sower, and the fertile soil? Let us reach always as high as the trees and ask for the strength that only God can send us. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come to you this morning with many things on our hearts and in our minds. We come to you hopefully inspired by this morning's message, encouraged, knowing that we too can be both a sower and the one who is the fertile soil. Help us to find ways, O oh God, to reach out into our communities, to spread your word and to be your hands and feet in all that we do. We pray this morning, particularly for those who have been lifted up before us. We pray for Shirley Bach. We pray for her continued healing from her broken hip. And we pray that her time in Quabbin will strengthen her and allow her to return home. We ask for you to send your healing presence to her and surround her with our love as well as your own. We pray continued prayers for Suga Totus and continued prayers for Glenn, Jan Noy's brother, who is in the hospital fighting an infection. We pray, O oh God, with thanksgiving for Sheila St. Lorenz's continued recovery and for her opportunity to be away with family this week. Loving and gracious God for all those we have not mentioned, for those we are too afraid to mention, those we wish to remain nameless, only known to you. We lift them up, O oh God, and we ask for your continued blessing and your continued presence in our lives. In your name we ask that you hear the prayers of your people. Amen. 
As we go forth from this worship time together, I invite us to continually be on the lookout for fertile places to plant seeds and to remember and never forget that even if something looks like it may not bear fruit, it may indeed sprout into something meaningful and living years later. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.